to the fifth part of this video series. Before I continue, there's four things I need to mention. The first is the combat system. I learned it from the videos of a user called President. So check out his YouTube channel. It's in the video description. Second thing, also in the video description, there's a file you need to download. You're going to find assets inside that you need to import into the warrior animations folder. We're going to use those in this tutorial. The third thing is in the demo, you might have seen the animation trails. I won't show how to make that because there's already videos on how to make animation trails. And the last thing is the camera glitch on the character select screen has been fixed and I'll upload the video shortly. So with that being said, let's begin. There's something I noticed in the previous video that I did with um, the walk and the run animations that I kept them in place. There's a little thing I want to modify in that. So let's go in the warrior folder animation type and walk take the great sword walk and uncheck this so he's moving but now we're gonna click show advanced options and select skeleton from here and I'm gonna type in run here take this run file and if I uncheck this you're gonna notice he's gonna wobble less now he's running in a straight line so that's what we need so you can save that part and now we can continue In the warrior blueprint, what I need to do is I'm going to set up the basic combo system. We're going to make two variables. One is called is attacking, and the other one we'll call it chain attack. Next, I'm going to type left mouse, and I'm going to get left mouse button. I'm also going to type in switch on int for integer get this I'm gonna add pins up until I have three we're gonna expand this later selection I'm gonna promote to variable and call it combo what else I'm gonna need is two custom events I'm gonna call this one chain combo copy paste that and I'm gonna call this one master reset or combo reset Now what I'm going to do is take is attacking, set it, chain attack, set it, and also combo, set. I'm going to compile and I'll go in, into my combo and type 1 here. And here. I can connect all three of these together. And connect them to the new custom event. Oops. So this here is going to be combo reset we can use this to reset a whole bunch of other uh, variables later for now it's just re gonna reset the combo for this tutorial now in in this area we need two branches what we gotta do is we're gonna go get set is attacking paste it get chain attack twice and I'm gonna need to get is attacking and put it into this condition and chain attack into the condition below now what's gonna happen is when the left mouse button is pressed it's gonna check if the character is attacking if he's not then it's gonna set that variable to true and continue on with the combo if he is attacking it's gonna go up here at the chain attack and set it to true what's gonna happen at this it's gonna get called by animation notifies and he's gonna come here and check is is the player allowed to chain attack if he is go on and you uncheck chain attack so that at the next click it can be checked again and you continue down in the combo system what we need now is we need to set combo so I'll just copy paste it from here I'll plug this into one and this one into two and I'll change the value for one to two and this one to three so what happens is when I click once it runs down this chain and if everything meets the requirements, I'm going to end up in this combo box that's going to execute this combo num and it's going to set combo to two. So the next time I click, it's going to go down this whole line of commands and then it's going to push me into this, the second one. And this is going to set it to three. So the next time I click, I'll be performing whatever's going to be aligned here. I'm going to right click and type play anim and get play anim montage and promote animal touch to a variable 
and we'll call this ATT for attack montage. Then I'm also going to set this three times. Connect the pins together and the last one you connected to number three. And then all of them are going to go right into this and a montage. Now that that's done, I'm just going to compile and save. And we're going to make some anim montage. So right click new folder, type in anim montage. Then we're going to go into animations and type in attack underscore, oops, attack underscore two. Right click create anim montage and call this w for warrior underscore attack 01. Then type in kick. Right click, create and a montage W underscore attack 02. And then type in attack underscore 1. And create an anim montage W underscore attack 03. So, what these are is his sword and shield attack combo. We're going to make him do three hits with the sword and shield and more with the great sword. So, we'll put this into the anim montage. We'll move here. Then, we'll go into each of them. And here in default slot, we'll set it to body. Just to show where that comes from again, is here in the warrior in his animation blueprint. If you go to the anim graph, you'll see here in the slot we have body. This, this allows any animation montage with the body tag to communicate uh, with the character blueprint, character animation blueprint, sorry. So in attack two, we're gonna set it to body and same thing for attack three, body. Now going back to the first one here, you check where the hit lands. So for example, right there. And add new notify and call it chain. This means that at this point, you're going to start playing the next animation, which will be attack two. So when this goes back to idle almost, we'll make a new notify and call that reset. We'll go into attack two and check where the hit lands. And back to idle, we'll put a reset right here. For attack 3, we don't need a chain yet. We're going to need it when we work the smash attacks. So we'll just put a reset. Take these three and save them. Now in warrior BP, you'll see here. In our variable for set, we can set attack 1, 2, and 3. We need to go back to the warrior blueprint animation blueprint sorry in his event graph type in chain and call the event notify and type in reset now we got these two you go into cast to warrior bp drag a blue pin out and what you need is chain combo and you also need reset combo reset so chain is going to go right into chain combo and reset is going to go right into combo reset. I'm just going to comment this from the previous video here, switching. And co comment this to chain and reset combo. Okay. Now let's give it a try and see what this gives. One, two, three. So he's performing the three hit combo now. One, two, three, but I have to click like a maniac, so. I'll find a fix for this so you don't have to click like crazy to get him to execute all three. And notice he's also moving. So some of the things we're gonna work on is Stopping, stopping him from moving and also pushing him forward when he does a thrust attack like a kick or this third attack where he kind of moves a bit will make him push forward but what we also have in our game is that we can switch modes so I'm just going to show one more time if I was to right click with the warrior as I'm switching I can actually perform the same combo which I don't want what I want to do is switch combos. I don't want to use these attacks no more. 
So these I'll disconnect from all this. I'll move it up. I'm going to copy and paste it. I'll add a pin. And I'll take combo. I'll, I'll copy the set combo and I'll set this to four. So our great sword is going to have four attacks. And I'll copy and paste this anim montage set variable. I'll connect it to four and then into the anim montage right here. Now what we're going to do is make the anim montage for the great sword. So with the warrior, let's just go check. So I'll type in slash and I'll take the first slash with no number attached to it. This one. And I'm going to make an anim montage out of this. Create anim montage w underscore attack gs underscore 01. It's going to copy this title. I'll type in slash again. Take slash 2, create anim montage and call that attack 2. Type in slash again, take slash three, create anim montage, put this to attack number three. There's just one more thing I want to check. This sword and shield slash. Okay, we're going to use it for something else. Now I'm going to filter out. Oh, never mind. No need to filter. They're all here. I'm going to drag these in the anim montage. Now in my greatsword attacks, I'll set these to body. And one more thing I'm going to do is back into warrior animation, I'll type in attack underscore one. This sword and shield attack looks pretty cool and I think we can use it for the greatsword. So I'm going to make an anim montage out of this too. And I'm going to call this one W underscore attack GS04. That'll be his four hit tiff. Fourth hit. Okay. And then put that in anim montage. And set it to body. So at the end of this hit, we're going to put another reset. We'll probably, we're going to need a chain later on. Not yet. Attack three. We're going to see where the hit lands. Or ideally where we want him to switch into the next attack. So let's say right here, and I'll put in a chain and a reset. Resets are when they go back to idle. So let's see what this does. Okay, I'll put a chain combo right here, a chain notify, sorry, and a reset one right here. Great sword attack one. That's where I want to put the chain. And the reset right here. Okay. So let's go back to Warrior BP. And here in this combo sequence, we'll change this to the GS attacks, the great sword attacks. What we need now is a branch right here. And we need to get greatsword mode. So when it's on, this is the sword and shield. So I'm actually gonna move this down. And these are this is at the greatsword combos. So I'll move all of this up and I'll comment it first. I'll call it greatsword combo. And this one, just move it a bit down and call it sword and shield combo. So now that we have these, we're going to connect the true and false wires. So if greatsword mode is on, you do the greatsword combo. And if it's off, you do the short, this, sorry, the sword and shield combo. And attacking, I'm going to put it into the branch, this attacking set. And I'm also going to connect chain attack. So let's compile and test that and see what we get. One, two, three. So with the short sword and my shield, I'm doing that combo. I'm going to switch the great sword. And now when I attack with the great sword, one, two, three, and four. So now our combo is different. So that's two things we took care of. And now what we're going to do is do a bit of troubleshooting and add smash attacks. 
So as you can see, while I'm switching, I can execute the combo, which I don't want. So in the next segment, we're going to cover these sort of things. After having tested, you probably noticed that in order to perform the combos, you have to click really fast to get into performance attacks. So here I'm just going to show you the small fix. What you do is you take the chain, notify, and you move it a bit further down. So that's going to give you a bit more of a time frame to perform to click. So you don't have to do this like attack, 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 attack. You could go attack, 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 and he's going to perform his three hits. So once I have moved these, I can test this out and show you. So I attack, attack attack before I was doing this attack 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 for him to do all three but see now he only did two and he stopped so if you push the chain and him notify a bit further you have more of a time frame to perform your attacks so you don't have to rush too much but you could change that based on your characters to stop the player from switching and performing attacks at the same time here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go to left mouse button We'll make a branch and we'll connect false to the next branch. And for the condition, I'll put in switching. Now that I have that here, the delay is set to 0.2. Well, it was set to 2 seconds, but you're going to have to set it to something lower. Because if it's 2 seconds, this is what happens it's just going to take a, f a bit of time for you to begin attacking. So here I'm attacking. I'm going to switch modes and I'm left clicking. One, two, there, now he's going to attack. So I can shorten that duration to 0.2 or 0.3. You can change it to what you like. But another thing, I don't want to switch as I'm attacking. So first I'm going to make a branch and it's going to check if I'm attacking. If I'm not, so I'll connect false. So if I'm not attacking, then I can proceed. I can proceed to switching. Actually, also what we might want to add is chain attack. So we'll put an and condition. So if he's not attacking and he's not doing a chain combo, so this is he's really not attacking, he's just standing still. You can switch. So let's give that a shot. So I right click, I'm left clicking. Now I can continue attacking. Now I'm right clicking. Nothing happened. I'm still in my greatsword mode. But if I right click now, there he's switching. So that's the small fix for that issue. So in this segment of the video, I'm going to focus on launching the character forward and stopping his movements as he attacks. And another thing I may explore and show is camera shake and a zoom in. If I don't show the zoom in now, I'm going to show it once I plug in the smash attacks. Because zoom in, you want to do that when you have an intense move. So you want to get a bit close to the character. And let's open up the warrior blueprint. In here, let's make a custom event. I'm going to call this launcher. So I know this is what launches the player forward. Then I'm going to type launch and I'm going to get launch character. After that, what I want is get actor forward vector and I also want to get actor up vector so now that I have these two what I want is a vector times float I want two of these I'm gonna add these two vectors together and I'll plug, uh, I'll plug that into launch velocity I'm gonna overwrite XY I'll connect the yellow dots together here. Now, for up vector, this is you're gonna set it to one unless you want to shoot the guy up during some of his some of his attack animations. And this one, I'll promote it to variable. I had done it in the previous video, so I have the variable right here, launch force. I'll just put that in there. Now I'm gonna connect these two together, but in between I need stuff. First, I need to set the character's ground friction to zero and then back to normal to, to 8 which is its actual value so I'm going to copy this character movement and I'll paste it up here drag a pin out and type in ground you should have the set ground friction you need two of these 
in between here we're gonna put the zero one and then when this is finished we'll set ground friction to eight but you don't want to do it right away because then your character won't move at all so you want to give him a small window you put a retriggerable delay and put it to leave it to 0.2 or 0.25 just to try so the bigger this number the longer he gets to slide on the floor now launch force I set it to negative 200 for some odd reason from the previous tutorial because something went wrong so previous recording sorry but here launch force I'll set it to zero but if I want a default value meaning at each of these attacks I just want him to move it a constant number let's say 1500 or I'll set this to zero and right here I could change the launch force based on the attacks so I could type in set launch force for each of them and this will dictate how far he's gonna the character is gonna go at each attack so let's say if the max I wanted him to go for these uh, oh this is the great sword by the way set launch force I also do it for the short sword here now I know the first attack he hits with the hilt so I don't want him to move too far so for this I'll leave it to let's say 600 these numbers you can play around with later for the kick I'll put it to 15 actually no not even put it to 1000 and then 1500 the great sword will experiment that with it after now I'm gonna compile this I'm gonna go into my warrior animation blueprint and what I want to do is here type in attack zero and I have these three animation for a short sword so right when I feel like he's about to perform a thrust forward so right let's say there what I'm gonna do is add notify I'll make a new one and I'll call it launch this is where he's gonna launch forward I'll do that for the two others so I check where he's about to perform the thrust brought right there and for the last attack right here when he's taking a step forward you want him to launch you can add multiple launch in the same sequence too so there too these you have to play around otherwise your character looks like they're their ice skating in their attacks and let's say one more right here so this one really covers a lot of ground and perhaps if you go back in the warrior blueprint in this sword and shield combo you probably don't need this to be such a big number you could actually set this to 600 or even less because he does it three times then in the animation blueprint you type in launch and you get the notify you go to cast a warrior VP drag a pin out and type in launcher and there you have your your custom event that you made so you connect these two together and we're gonna call this uh, we'll just call it launch character because you can actually launch the character back and forward even left or right I think with the proper vectors because we use the forward vector and the up vector only we didn't use the left right or whatever so let's see what this gives let's see so he's moving forward now but I can still walk around as I'm attacking and I don't want that so what I'll do is in the warrior blueprint I'm gonna go to his movement input you take both of these events put them to the side and you need two branches and you also wanna get his attacking and plug it into both of them connect the false of each branch to add movement input and then connect the input axes right here into the branches so let's see what that gives I'm gonna hold W as I attack to see if he's gonna move forward. Now he stopped moving forward and I'm holding W. So my inputs are being cut out because I'm attacking but the character he's sliding forward. So you notice in the first attack it's kind of a strange slide. The second one is a bit more forgiving. Third one makes sense. So you just wanna avoid these sliding movements but I'm gonna leave it for now. So the next thing in the next segment, what I'm going to do is try with a camera shake. We're going to try to implement it. 
just gonna comment this. In this segment, we're gonna add a camera shake to our attacks. So when they kind of land or the point of impact, the camera shakes a little bit. It's not uh, too noticeable, but it just adds a small bit of intensity. Otherwise, it feels very static and doesn't feel alive enough. So to start, I'm gonna make a um, custom event and I'll call this cam shake. Uh, I'm gonna call it camera shake actually, because we're gonna make a variable and we'll call that cam shake. Then I'll get player controller. And what I wanna type now is client play. Now you have client play camera shake right here. Shake, we're, go we're gonna make a class and scale. We'll promote that to variable and we'll call this cam shake or uh, yeah, I guess cam shake. I was gonna call it shake intensity, but just stick to this for now. This is on camera local, that's good. Now we need to give it a class. So we'll go into our content and general folder. We'll make a new blueprint class and type in shake and you have camera shake right here. Press select and we're gonna call this, uh, we'll call it C uh, C H A R for character cam shake. Now when you access that, you're gonna have oscillation Duration, blend in, time, blend out time. And these will set this to 0 0.25, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Then for rotation oscillation, open up pitch yaw and roll and set these values to 1, 25 for all of them. So we'll compile and save that. Let's go to Warrior Blueprint again. And here in class, we have character camera shake. And you can plug that in together. I'm going to comment this and I'll call this camera shake. So on my top left quadrant, that's most of the, the miscellaneous things. On the top right, I keep all the combinations, the attack combos. And bottom right, we're, we're going to add uh, damage inputs and outputs. And the bottom left is going to be all your skills and summons and spells. So now that we have that, let's go to our animation blueprint and type in attack zero. So we're going to add a small camera shake. We can add it right where the chain is a bit before. The reason why I won't put it on the chain is because the last smash attack won't have a chain notify. So it's not going to work that well if we use chain for it. Because either ways we're going to need a a notify that shakes the camera besides this gives you more flexibility so you can really shake it just a bit before the actual uh, chain and notify because that'll make you switch animations so here I got camera shake before the chain before the point of impact I'll put one boom right here and then in his third attack so I know he swings we'll put it when he takes that big step boom right here right after that launch so that point is the camera will shake then I'll go into his animation blueprint type in shake get that notify drag a blue pin and camera shake get that function so this is gonna call our custom event and I'll place it here to the side. Comment that to cam shake. I'm gonna compile that. Oh, there's a problem. So let's go see. That's good. Okay. So let's see what happens with the camera now. Uh, I pressed right click. Well, we're gonna add some launch. While I press right click, let's just check this. So launch, launch there, launch, and launch again. So that's where we're gonna place. We're gonna place a launch on each of them and they're gonna be pretty intense. So let me switch back weapons and check the camera shake. It's barely noticeable. It's probably because the scale is set to zero. Forgot to change that. Yeah, it's set to zero. That's why the camera wouldn't shake. 
So while I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all this aside and I'm going to type in set cam shake and I'll put this to 0.1. Oh, I'm doing it for the wrong combo system. Sorry, but while we're here, let's just connect all these camera shakes in any way because we're going to need them later. And now for the sword and shield, we do the same thing. Set cam shake. You can increase the intensity of the cam shake bit by bit based on which combo you're at, just to give it more of that intensity. So here I'll put it to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and this one will put it to 0.6 and see what that gives us. Yeah, the camera is shaking. It's very, 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 very faint. And I think in his animation of his attack 3, we can actually incorporate multiple camera shakes because it feels strange that the camera doesn't shake while he's performing all these movements, these circular motions. So I can add a notify bar and put camera shakes 3 times for each launch. Right when he takes a step. So right here, we can shake the camera. Right there, we can shake the camera. And we shake it at the swing. Going back to Warrior BP. Here, I can set this to 0.3. Oh. Put it to 0.3. So 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and we'll put this to 0.7. Let's see what that does. Yeah, it's shaking all right. If you want to play around with the settings of the camera shake, let me get that. Here, duration, blend in time, blend out time. You can always play with these and get the exact camera shake you want. So going back to the warrior, I'm gonna go to his anim montage and I'm gonna get his great sword attacks and add the launch in there. So let's see where we should launch him here. Type in GS and I have his attacks. So I got one, two, three, and four. Let's start with one. So I want to put a launch right here and the camera shake right there. Let's go to his second one, put a launch there, and put a camera shake right there as the blade is gliding through the air, slicing through the air actually. And then here we can add a launch. And here we can add a launch. You want to put launches when the character's legs are kind of lifted up because that's when he's pushing. And that motion where the blade is slicing through the air, that's where we're going to put a camera shake. So he's going to launch, launch, slice. Let's go to his fourth attack. And he's going to launch right there at the start. It's going to step, you're going to feel the camera shake because this is his fourth attack so we can add some intensity. We can add a launch like right there. And camera shake right here. Okay, so let's go to warrior blueprint. Now in our greatsword combo we can manipulate these values. So our launch force was 600 to 1000. So we can kind of follow that same path. So here we can put 600, we can put it to 
650, 675, and we can put this to, let's put it to 750 and see what that gives. Now for camera shake, here we could put it to previous highest one is 0.7, so I guess we could start around 0.5. So 0 0.5, 0 0.75, then I can put it to 0.9, and then I can put it to 1.3. Maybe that might shake it way too much, but let's see. Okay, let's switch modes. Sweet. So the camera is shaking and he's moving forward. The last attack he moves forward really well. Okay. So that's it for the camera shake. And in the next segment or video, we're gonna take down the smash attacks and add some zoom in on the smash attack of the character. And maybe we might add it to the great sword, the last attack here. Might add a zoom in there. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.